and welcome back to another episode of the Sinead Says Podcast. This week we have none other than Daddy Haig. The legend of himself. Oh God, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's going to come on today. You, you said a few questions. We're going to talk about our relationship, your yeah. relationship with mom, Ooh. your past. I'm only joking, we won't go there. Mm-hmm. It's not that kind of podcast. <laughs> Good so yeah. before we begin the podcast, um, just mention the sponsor sponsors, which is an online therapy platform. I need a lot of I needed a lot of therapy after childhood. You did, yeah. No, you didn't. <laughs> it helped me. No, it didn't. But uh, anyone who has a difficult relationship with their family can use better help, or just fine. Well, did you have a difficult relationship with your family? Oh God, are we getting into it? No, I didn't. But I'm only just saying that. Like I'm saying, if anyone has a difficult relationship, they can go to oh, therapy. This can. is our advert. They can, surely. They can. Definitely. Um, Dad sure personally has not any therapy, but he could have been done with, doing with it. No, I shouldn't have. <laughs> but we're, anyway. We're made of old stock. I know. We will get to talk about that as well, how the gen- your generation are a bit cold, I'd say. Mm, mm, maybe. Not so much anymore, but we will talk about it. But if you do want to start therapy, then you can use my discount code, which is betterhelp.com slash Sinead. That is betterhelp.com slash Sinead. And that will get you 10% off your first month. All right. So, Daddy Hig. Yeah. How are you feeling about this? Feel okay about it. All right. So, what we're going to do first is we're just going to, you know, talk about you growing up. (laughs) Not the bad stuff. We don't talk about the bad stuff. There's no bad Just stuff. Just a general backstory to... There was to no bad stuff. It was all good stuff. Oh, why? Okay. Um, so you say, if you ask anybody else down in Strabane, that might be a different story. I don't know about that. No, well, I not, I will not go that far. No. But, um, so, just in general, you know, how many brothers and sisters did you have? The house you had growing up? You know, why do you eat so much spuds? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? Like, you know, what kind of dinners did we have back then? You had nothing but spuds. That's what I mean. This is why. Spuds and a couple of sausages bunged on the top, and that was it. But sausages, you told me sausages was a good day. You're you, right. You would have got protein on a good day. You're right. No, no, there was always a decent bit of meat of something, maybe. Sausages or special mints. Right, okay. Dirty, Along with dirty loads. special mints, that's an advertisement for dirties, isn't it? I don't <laughs> know if you should do that. Ah, right, go for it. Local business, plug away. Um, so At that time, it was only meat we all got, like. Yeah, so you are from County Tyrone. The Glebe. The Glebe. The Glebe, all right. What was it like growing up in the Glebe? How many brothers and sisters? I have three brothers and two sisters. Mm-hmm. And you were all in the one house? All in the one house. Mm-hmm. There was four boys in one bedroom. Right, how did that work? Two beds and one be- one room. Two do- Top to do- tail? Top to tail. Right. Oh, no, it wasn't even that. You just were on the bed together and that was it. All Fired right. on. Fired on. So why so much spuds? Where oh. did this... Like, did everyone have spuds? Like, did... So if anyone doesn't watch my Instagram, well, like if you've come here from my podcast, my dad is kind of <laughs> known as the spud man because if I'm being honest, like I actually didn't know it wasn't normal to have this much spuds in your life. So I just thought that dad's spuds was like a normal mind for like an Irish dad or like a dad. So when I obviously had Instagram, like I was just chatting on my Instagram story and people seen dad's dinners, like they were literally like stacked up like huge loads of spuds and everyone started writing back to me like Sinead what's going on with your dad's spuds like what's going on with your dad's dinner and I was like what do you mean like that's his normal dinner that he has every single day <laughs> so there is literally like 11 spuds it's always 11 or 12 I don't know why it's like an uneven number it gives me well let's turn to your mum whatever she gives me I'll put I'll eat them okay if there's 11 12 13 14 doesn't matter mm-hmm. 20 mm-hmm. so you went to school yeah and then you finished school and then you went on tell us what you do for a living well I have my own uh Business in the PVC world. That's it. We're we're showing it here on the video. Yeah, MVG <coughs> Morn Valley Guttery. That's it. Right. Started and you maybe started about that about twenty eight, thirty years ago, maybe. So was this your first job at a school? No. Nope. What was your first job at a school? First job was a painter. Painter. Can't An apprentice that. painter. Why do you not paint my room? Why do we always because get Uncle Sean by? I was only done it for about three weeks. Right. Okay. And Four then guttering. No, no. Oh, long, 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 long time. I served my time as an engineer. Oh, is that why you can fix everything? Well, maybe it helps. Okay. Can't fix everything, like. Like, I would, like, have broken GHDs, and Dad would be like, give me them, and then he would fix them, and I'm like, how do you know how to fix, like, my straighteners, you know? Well, but I just think Dad knows how to fix everything, and that's how it works. Old school 
how they fix everything. Yeah, I know. You know, people don't fix nothing now. They throw everything away, like, but which is ridiculous. Yeah, dads, this is the problem, right, of the expectation of the man versus the expectation of our future husbands because dad can fix everything, do everything, and then the new generation of men, No, they don't want to so do much. this stuff. They don't. They're not computer aware, but they're not practically aware. Yeah, so I expect my husband to have fully be able to fix everything in the house. I don't know. You're never going to get a man like that nowadays. They no, don't do you that. don't think so? You think they're gone? You think that's a dying generation? Uh, there's no practical fixing and anything they do nowadays, sure. Absolutely none, like. It's all to do with computers. Oh, no. Yes, got to press a button, bang, yeah. That's the way to fix it. It's all right, like, you know, for all that stuff, but it's not all right if you're going to wear a plug. Very true. Don't they don't even have plugs now. They, they throw it away, like, sure, you know what I mean? <laughs> the plug's a lead that's fully sealed up. You can't fix a plug. Uh. Unless you change oh, the fuse. Oh, right, okay, so you and would I, fix it. Oh, I used to f- remember And actually, that. I don't even think they can even... Change of fuse on a plug, and all you do is pull it out and put a new one in. Like there you go, guys. If guys are listening to this, that's how you fix yep. a, fix a fuse in a plug. That's so dying generation of men, I think so too. To be honest, they don't do. There's no, that. there's nothing like the, our Irish dads that can fix everything. So then you had, well, well you ended. You I'll started say, the gutter in business because you had my time as an engineer. Mm-hmm. I went to the training center in Derry, then. Uh, was down there and then I got an apprenticeship. You you get tried to be placed or something and the uh, job mm-hmm. as such. So I got into the lock factory in Straban at that time, which was based in Ballycoman. The way business was, they were nearly all funded from the government anyway because there was no way of running them, keeping them running and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. it was kind of like an up and growing business was being kind of been helped with the government a bit. Right. So then when the funding ran out as usual, the place was closing down and things like that. I think that's what happened to me, but I got about a year, year and a half out of there, like, you know, after my first year apprenticeship. And then you became an entrepreneur? No, it didn't happen <laughs> then, either. That didn't happen then. Um, You'd have been on the dole for months. Right. Getting nothing. And what was the dole about. payment right back then? Huh? What would have been the dole payment payments right back then? £11 a week. <gasps> but everything was and a lot cheaper ha- then, though, wasn't it? In, you had a hand on £10. <laughs> Why? Because you the, there were no money in the house. You oh, like to to grant I. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. You know what I mean. Okay. And then she made and she would give you a cu- she made give you a couple of pound back, like you know. <laughs> but a pint was only fifty p then, anyway, so it didn't right. really matter. Right. Okay. Different pints. Are, pints are good five really these days. Fifty two p was forty eight p. I think I remember the very first pint, and then it went up nearly straight away to fifty two p. Right. Okay. Very important thing: pints of beer. I know, them pints of beer. Well, whenever you run a bit at that age, anyway. I know. So then when did you start the fucking business? No, it was years after that. Did you start, so was it after or before you met mum? Oh no, when I was with mum. Okay, right. Oh, okay, I thought you Me had done this before. Me and mum went to England too as well, in between teams. Uh, a lot of people went to England to work. We got a, I got a job in the engineering game in Finley's Oma, that was Finley's Height Center, Sight Handlers. Right. But as usual, it only lasted about a year or two, you know, as well, there too. But it was a good job, like it was all right. Like. all right. But it closed down too. Everywhere I went, everything closed down or shut down. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was bad following omen. you. It was a bad omen, like. That it was the universe guiding you. <laughs> and thanks again. So then we hitched up and went to, me and Maureen went to England for a while. Talk about the meeting of you and Mom, but can't just go on past it. We have nah, to get can. into the you, nitty you, gritty. You could get past that already. <laughs> you don't even fucking mind, Baba. Yeah, I do, surely. Of course, I remember. But the story would I would say is not the same story your mum would tell you. Right. Okay. So what's your story? My story is that my brother Eugene, he fancied Maureen's cousin, although I didn't know this. Uh, Rosie, and he was mad to get away with her. Okay. To get chatting there, but Eugene's not the best chatter, like. Right, but you are. And maybe I'll be a bit faster, uh, are faster with a tongue, like. Right. But, uh, so you were basically a wingman. Enlisted my eye, definitely, in the Four Trees Hotel. And we had to uh, get chatting to them. Was, well, Eugene knew Rosie anyway, can I? Well, he, he may have been chatting there before, but mine was a long way, Rosie. So <coughs> I said, I'll have to do this, whether I like it or not, like, just to get Eugene. So is this up. prior to seeing what she looked like? Oh, aye, aye. All right, okay, okay. There's no Instagram back in them days. You couldn't have a peek. So, uh, in the fur trees in them days, you weren't allowed to get under the fur trees if you were wearing jeans. Right, okay. There was a code, a 
What were you wearing? Jeans. So you weren't allowed in. But like you, you were allowed on the. You, what? You weren't allowed in with jeans. You weren't allowed to get on the. So dance. what would you wear? Trackies. You had to wear trousers. But like suit trousers. Just kind of ordinary trousers. I can't even remember what they were. They couldn't have been nice anyway. But. Okay, so what you couldn't get in? No, well, we were in the lobby, like you know what I mean, or in the bar part. But you know, to get on the dance, you had to be wearing trousers. So okay. Uh, I had to go and get go home and get trousers on me. So Did you walk home from there? No, Eugene was driving at that time. Okay. He had a, he actually one of the fellas that had a car in them days. Right. So uh, he must have took me up to get my trousers changed because he definitely wanted to get on to see Rosie. Easy. Okay, right. <laughs> and a wingman, you have to do the wingman. You have to go like you couldn't have, have left him. You have to do what you're told, basically. Yes. So you know, mine would never have got me. <laughs> <laughs> of, uh, you never changed the jeans. I did. Uh, I changed into the trousers and got no, came back down again. Right, and then. You came in and you seen this beautiful no, woman. No, no, already we had already met Rosie and thingies. He wouldn't be chatting them up at that stage, like. Oh, I thought you said you hadn't seen her. No, we had seen her in the lobby and we were chatting them in the lobby. Like, oh, you know, why have you not talked about when you first seen her? Oh God, I don't know. I can't remember it that well, like. Love at first sight. Not at all. Dad, lost what? at first sight. Lost at first sight. Dad definitely. always says he lost, mummy. Yeah. He says the secret is lost, not love. Absolutely. There you go. Without a doubt. <laughs> if you're always lost after them, you'll always want. What them, age you? for you then? Uh, must have been 21 is sure 20 right, okay. 20 when was like 17 or 18 because it was just after that, that uh, operation and stuff so that's right forgot about that dad has a big scar on his mm, yeah. thing here he doesn't want to show you but he's got he's got a big scar here which makes him look really scary so everyone always says this that you know if I have a boyfriend come in they're like what did your dad do but it's actually maybe we you shouldn't have no tell bone. them all that you have no bone here no, it's too much information. D- too too much to be telling all that. You'd never get through all that operation. Everyone thinks that now that you've done something really bad. No, they don't. I think they do. You want to leave it there? You want to leave this? <laughs> she always leave that over them, and then they think, just watch them. Oh, that's where I get all my entertainment genes from. No, I can tell you surely what happened. It was like a cancer cyst at one time, and uh. then they had to get it out, and... That was it, like basically. But I had to go into hospitals and I'm in hospital for eleven weeks with the whole hand on it. No, you're only nineteen then. Mm-hmm. They cut the whole bone out, bang. And right, my dad has um no feeling on the side of his face, and it's really disgusting because he doesn't feel food on his face, and he always has food over his face. Really embarrassing. Not spoiled or something. And he used to have this mustache, like fully mustache, of my whole childhood, and there used to always be food in it. It was not. Dad was rotten. I, like I've got clear. Clear Maybe visions of like food all over your tash. Is that why you needed the therapy then? Oh yeah, the food <laughs> in the tash really dramatised me. <laughs> so yeah, basically, Dad had like cancer, um, and then they cut it out. It wasn't it wasn't malignant? Cancer. It wasn't like it was just like a cancerous lump and a stroke. But geez, it was very. They wouldn't do stuff like that now. Like take what? your whole bone out now. It wasn't the throat? It was in the bone. And you've got no teeth or gums on that side. No, yeah, just just that side is missing. They took it out. If you're normal, like just like I just no teeth, like just chop a log out and move on. Uh, so that's that, and then mum met him, and like that was that. Head over heels, first woman I ever laid eyes on. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> well, not tell her that. You can tell her that. She won't listen anyway. She'll listen to this one, maybe. No, she'll listen to it already. We wanted mum on the podcast, but she was having none of that. Is she not under that? So I think I get my love for the I just camera can't say and no stuff. To you. I just can't say no to you. She yeah, you got that. No, you love the attention, Dad. You're yeah, who obsessed. Doesn't, who doesn't love attention? Whenever we go out and like people recognise Dad, it is a funny thing because he really laps it up. Like, she was not the like. You really enjoy it. Just but that's what I get. It for. I almost get that from you. And then Mum's more reserved. Like, and she's more reserved. Like, or like You're your son. Introvert stuff. Yeah, she's like introvert, if extrovert. I put the camera yeah. on my brother, he'd be like, "Get that camera away from me, you weirdo!" And I'm like, "Okay." That's yeah. just the way he is. And then mum and him are like that. And then me and dad are like, hi, everyone. Welcome to the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, so speaking of you and mom, you and mom met when you were 20 mm-hmm. or 21, whatever. And then you have been together for how many years? Well, I'm oh. 60 next year. So <coughs> I know. Mass. I know how many years, but you should know because your anniversary was last that. month. Not. Who wants to know them things? 34 years. 34 years. There you go. All right, okay, so... You're there to remind me, and so is mum. What is the secret? <laughs> I don't know, Jesus, I don't know what the secret would be for that. I would say look after... Lost, maybe. Dad always <laughs> says lost. 
I think I've seen more lost in the later years rather than like when I was a child, like more lost now, like more... We're too busy because we're always working. Probably uh, been busy all the time makes a good relationship because, you know, you've got to get on with things, like, you know what I mean? It's not, it's not a matter of being held in hands and saying, oh, yes, this is all about this and that and whatever, and with me and you and all that crap. That, no, that I think you're wrong. No, it's not. <laughs> you've got to get on with life. Earning a living, trying to get your bills paid and all that. It's different for you, it's a whole different generation now where there seems to be more money and, and you think you should have more freedom to be involved with each other as you would think. But that does some hard truths today. You know, it doesn't it's not like that when we we had to get on and get things done. Right. And we don't. Well, you, there's more money about, like, you know, for you guys. Uh, you to be fair, like, we can, like, go on more holidays and all. Like, back then, the she just couldn't, couldn't have went on holidays no, as yeah, much and stuff. Once a year, that was it. Yeah. And even back then, when you were younger and dating, you wouldn't have went. You no. would have went. Where'd you go for your honeymoon? Well, Bundorn. Oh, we went to Bundorn. Or Slego, and you went with people. Yeah. We you went, went with your sister. Sister and Heather, her husband. I think only went for three or four days, only. Three days or four. That's right. Again. And. Galway it was. See this whole thing, this whole wedding fiasco, right? I only realised that weddings are supposed to only be like half a day, but now weddings are like a week. Yep. And back in your day, you got married and you didn't even say at the reception, you just fucked off and said, see you later. Uh, well, you were supposed to be seen to be going away, you are going away. Like, yeah. So we had to go away, we went over to Lufford, over there in our hotel and sat down there and had a drink on our own. That's so stupid. No, Why well not just party with your mates? That's not the way it was done. You're supposed to be sent off and everybody waved you off and all this rubbish. Yeah, and like you have the tins on the back of the yeah, thing. Yeah. You actually did have the tins. I think there was. There was, because there was a video of it. It's like this really old car. Who's the video of that? Mom's dress, though. Oh. What's your year? Back in the 1940s. Mom had a real, <laughs> mom had a real <laughs> short hair as well. <laughs> but, um, so right, okay, married 34 years, secret of success is lost. Yeah, well, good part of it, maybe. A bad of it. I know, but there's a lot of support and acceptance in your relationship. Well, no, you know, there isn't. Mom that always knows that you're always going to be there. You're always going to pay the bills on time. You know what I mean? You always know there's going to be a plate of spuds every night. You're right. Just get the spuds out. And be, uh, everything's a tap. If, yeah. if the spuds stop, they're going to be divorced. No, there wouldn't. Oh, my God. <laughs> my dad, without my mom, is like, I actually think, like, if my mom dies before my dad, like, he's going to starve to death. <laughs> like, the house, <laughs> when mom goes away for two days, it is chaos in here like there's shit everywhere like dad doesn't know to know how to make dinner what do you mean dad no, could you make yourself clean. dinner and i'm not talking about a sandwich with a chin on it no i can't make it dinner. but dad you need to learn you know well i could probably boil spuds push you could push. not yeah. how much would you how long would you boil a spud for 20 minutes where well now it's in this thing here but i'm not too Steamer. sure how to work that right okay so yep if my Mom goes for my dad. Yeah, he'll starve to death. And the house is chaos. There's plenty of spuds in the shops. And would you can wee packs. Them? Yeah, so he goes in and gets like those wee packs from the spa or whatever. And mom's not here, but still, it's still chaos. Like there's like, you know, there's knives and crumbs everywhere and all. It's just not the vibe. But also we do. Listen dig. to the woman we that's wild cleaning herself. I know, no. Shh. Come on now. We're on this. <laughs> we're on the same team when it comes to cleanliness. <laughs> well, I, and it's not. Uh, it's not only a lack of wee bits of crumbs and things, but it, mum thinks it's very untidy. Yes, that's all. Yes. So mum really likes to have a really clean house, but it's really, really, um, it's a bit much sometimes. But I don't think she realises it's a bit much. Yeah, we're not going to do a bit more, mum. Oh, like he's scared, la. Yeah, you're right. Oh, like he got a warning. You got a warning before you came on, didn't you? I did. I. You did, I. <laughs> So basically, mum's really clean. Me and dad are not the clean, like, cleanest. But also, mum had clean. me. Mum had me pure spoiled. Like I'm so, I was so spoiled. Mm-hmm. And then when I went away and then came back and then I didn't know how to put on a wash, she'd be going mad. But I was like, you never learned me how to put a wash on. But then I had to take my own own in- initiative. No, well, then. But no one's as clean unless mum does you that. Learn. That's the only way to learn, anyway. Learn by your mistakes. There you go, dad. Do it wrong first, and you'll definitely not do it wrong the next time. Okay. So you do it. Right, okay. Just like you do your stuff for your podcasting and all this, whatever, uh, get into the, you go and YouTube it or you go and do this, you go and find out, you mm-hmm. don't know how to do it, do it wrong, even, the, even when you do do it. True. Speaking of, people are asking us, I was asking people, what should they ask us or what should we talk about? So they did give us a few questions and one of them does relate to that. So one of them is, what do you think of my job? Your job? 
It was a class job. I wouldn't mean a job like that if I could do it. But how long do you remember at the very start? What? You didn't think at the very start? When I was kind of uh, gallivanting about the place, well, no you, degree. No, no, you were, well, you... There was a wee bit of disappointment. No, there were no disappointment. Never no disappointment. Doesn't matter what you do. You did want me to finish my degree. Well, I just wanted you to get a basic yeah. education over there when you got a chance. Because, mm-hmm. like, we never got to college, like. Yeah. So, you know, if you were going to do something like that, you may as well commit to it. Although, it worked out all right that you didn't commit to it, but... Mm-hmm. I know. So, there was, I would say there was you know, a wee bit of friction there for a wee while. Mm, I'd no. say uh, we. I felt it a wee bit, but I always said, you know, yeah, that well. I'll make it happen, Dad. And you <laughs> had to just fucking believe me. Well, we're gonna we're gonna uh, let you get on whatever you want to do yourself. Mm-hmm. You're happy enough what you do as long as you're happy. It doesn't matter what you're doing if you're out washing dishes for somebody. It doesn't matter to me as long as you're happy. Exactly. And sometimes they don't know how to express that. Hmm? Men don't really know how to express that or say that out loud. We're, we're, so this know, is Dad telling you that. All your dads are proud of you. Of course we are. doesn't matter who you are. Kids come first no matter what. You know what I mean? You yeah. Get a chance. But, you know, if you get a chance of going to college, you, you know, you think, try a wee bit harder to do your fuck off. Try, try and get there, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, uh, because you're thinking, you know, it's a good wee opportunity. It'll, it'll, if it's no good to you, it'll be useful to you yeah. later on. That and was always what the, what was said. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's always something you'll pick up from it and you might never think you're going to use it. It's like Pythagoras' theorem. Who the hell's ever going to use it? Like Very true, Dad. Right. But okay. at the end of the day, I had to use it. I forget how to use it again now, by the way, but right. I had to use it, an engineer, and then later on, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know what I mean? Maybe a wee, wee small thing that comes in very, very useful, but it generates your mind too, I suppose, to make it... Make it Make things good for you later on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then another thing people wanted to know was, what about me going away all the time? Like, how do you feel about Class that? Class to get ready. <laughs> Fuck off, Dad. <laughs> There's a lot of people like that are like, oh my God, how, my daughter's going away. How can I handle it? I think I've always been pretty... I think I've always been away. Oh, you have. I, yeah. since, since 16. No. Oh, Jesus, I can't be out of the house at 16. That's illegal. You were away. So didn't you 18. go to Spain, wasn't it, in, at 16? 18. You were away in Spain at 16? Dad, I wasn't because I wasn't allowed to drink and I was working as a, in a nightclub. Right. So it was 18. Must have been 18 then. Yeah, so I did all them seasons in Magaluf and then w- and when I wasn't in Magaluf, I was at university and then if I wasn't at university, I was like travelling. So like I did like six seasons in Magaluf. So, da- what, so Dad kind of was like, although oh. I did have a few phone box moments. What do you what do you mean you haven't I rang you from the phone box? You have done that many a day and <laughs> many a night crying and all this. What about the, what was his hand? No uh, money. No no no, you never you you knew I that. I asked was for the, money once. You knew that was the end deal right enough somewhere along the line, like I asked for money once, that one time, remember? In Australia. Oh right. Now you were going into Australia, was it? Uh, and I had no money and then I had to pay my rent, so I had to ask for money. Not no, you didn't ask for money too often now. You never gave us money. Just used anyway to send you way. food to your school or not to the school. But oh, you used to send me an ask to shop to university. It's just stuff like that. Uh, that used to help me out. And pay your flights over and back. Uh, that's kind of a given. That's kind of you have to give. You have to do that. Like get you there to make sure that you're actually going to. Do you want to pay stay. for my flights now? No, I do not. No <laughs> way, Jose. <laughs> I pay for your flights now. It's all right. That's the way to do it. Yeah. That's the way it should should be a full circle. There you go. We're in the cheap end of it, and then you are in the dear end. Uh, we're just having the crack. Just like, ex- life's about experiences. Oh, I because that's what we're going to talk about next. Um, memories, good memories. Because people are asking, what is our favorite? What What is our favorite memory of each other? I'm going to say Vegas. <laughs> that's about. I have a few memories, but obviously now the most recent one well, is Vegas. Odd. So I took my dad to Vegas for his birthday, and we went all out. Yeah, you went all out. I went all out on me. Yes. Was, oh, it's a great, great memory. Uh, loved every minute of it. Like we had the best time. Yeah, we had some time. Yeah, and I think the best thing ever was going to Vegas for my dad because I feel like I would have been such a mess if I would have went with the girls and we seen so many things. My dad doesn't like to lie about like so. No. He had to have a jam packed schedule, which I did for like him every month. What was your favorite bet? Um, oh, the old time. 
school town was class, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, we got really drunk that night, though. Remember when we went home on a Hummer? Aye. And I wanted to stay, and you wouldn't let me stay. Uh, well, no, no, no. I'm I says, not Dad, a kid anymore, I says, Dad, you can stay if you want. I was starving. Like, Dad, we didn't eat that day because we were just <laughs> drinking all day. And then we went to... We weren't drinking all day. We did eat. Dad, we've been, we were drinking the whole holiday, like... Everywhere we went, yeah, you we were walking drinks. down the street at eleven o'clock with pa- with cans of beer. But it was only a, just a, a newfangled thing, so that you could do it. Like only had one can along the street, like just for the cracky. That was more than one can. No, you had, lie. no, you had more than me because you went for one of them. Oh, whether we slushies, fat Tuesdays, unreal. Mm. And then we got really drunk and fell asleep for like twelve hours. Yeah, well, because we were burnt out. You see, we, uh, we were tired. Much. But yeah, that was um, probably my best memory. But like young memories. Um, you can't remember. I can't remember. Uh, best, say, best memory uh, would be whenever we used to take you up the top road and we used to, you weren't took nowhere to holidays or anything else. Uh, it was a sunny day and we sent you up. There was old smash cars and old rubbish, <gasps> the rubbish dump. Oh and my God. These were and having fire and stones at oil cars and kicking things <laughs> and... Guys... Do you this is that? a core memory coming back to me. <laughs> going to the dump. What the fuck? It wasn't a dump now. Come Dad, on. Dad, it was a fucking dump. It was like old red cars up in the side of an old hole. And we you entered the dump. Road. That's fucking dangerous enough though. <laughs> oh my God, I totally forgot about that. That's so weird that we used to just go to the dump. Was it you didn't used to go to the dump. Once we went up there. Was it around Granny, Lo- Granny Logue's house? Up the top of Granny Logue's road. Top road. I, isn't that mad that I've just remembered that now? What the fuck? Mm-hmm. We were loving life. You still have that memory, so it's all right. Oh, my God. I know a whole lot of memories. We had a lot of good holidays in Spain, in Melina, Acudia. Ibiza. You, the Ibiza one would have been the one where all those, the, you had all We had loads of stuff in the hotel. Right. It was very uh, good. That was, you know, you had a great time. Yeah. You didn't see us much, like, because you were too busy playing. I know. I fell in love in Ibiza. That was time, like, my first, bo- like, first boy I fancied was there, and I was, was only it? what age? He was called Christian. He was from England. Mm. He was in the Shark Club, and I was in the Dolphin oh, the Club. Shark, the Shark Club. I, I was in the Dolphin Club. And he was in the Shark Club, and what I fell in love then? with him. But he must have thought I was a stalker. Like I, that <laughs> was before my braces, and we all know what my, I was like pre-braces. You were still beautiful then, but the teeth were hanging out. No, we're not, Dad. My nickname because you sucked your dummy too long. Yeah. I sucked my dummy. Guys, I was still stuck in my dummy. I used to sneak my dummy into school and I, mu- and I must have been P7. I swear to God. But I didn't suck until I was P7 but sometimes I would get a dummy And somehow. how did I get it at you? Do you remember that story? Yes. Your friend. Give me a fiver. No. I remember he said, okay, right, you got, this is what I remember. Your friend says, I'm going to give you a fiver and you're going to put your dummy in your play oven. Wait, I do remember someone. Who was that? Murphy. Put your dummy. Mark, yeah. Mark, so yeah. you're gonna put your dummy in the in your because fi- we had like a we you know, we fake. I don't ovens. want him to get the praise for that, you know. But anyway, I remember. Th- well, might have took it back then after that. But then I remember putting getting the fiver and putting the dummy in the thing, and that was that was gone then. But I can't. But I must have got it back. Well, do you not remember uh, Santa Claus taking it out of you? No. They're not the. Thing. They were all oh right, that's right. They are now. So Dad was Santa Claus, but I didn't know. Yes, and I said I'll get this dummy off her now. And I was so like sucking the dummy. Like I must have been four or five. I don't and know. he says, uh, oh, "You were maybe not." I I think I was no, I was old that dummy. And I says the only way to get this off her maybe a Santa or give it a Santa for her presents. Presents. So I told you that down as Santa, like you didn't know I was your dad because we were doing all the kids. <laughs> How could I not know that you were my dad? Like, so you were just too wee, and you just were fantasized about Santa Claus, just like every other kid. Like, the funny thing is, there's actually a photo of like me sitting on Santa's knee. I think it's out there, and it's literally dad. Like, <laughs> was it out right there? I don't remember. It would have been too, I suppose. Oh my god, I forgot about that. That's right. Right. So Murphy's not getting the credit for okay, that. Okay, right. So you took the dummy, but then I still, I still had it. You know, when I was living in Maglift doing seasons, I everyone used to have siestas. Um, and I used to be so tired to have to work all night but I could never nap in siesta and I thought wonder if I get a dummy we'll be able to siesta and I went into the shop and bought a dummy and I sucked a dummy when I was 18 years old to get me to sleep did it work? I think so I mm-hmm. I mean it was really embarrassing when I brought boys over like but <laughs> she needed I just knittered sorry <laughs> I hope you've lost that dad back. you're very used to me bringing boys over anyway so it's not like 
No. Well, Got accustomed to boyfriends over the years. Just not a lad. Doesn't matter to me. <laughs> That's what someone asked me too. They were like, what's needs boyfriends being they're like? They're not, they're, none of them was ever bad lads. They're all good lads. So, yeah, been nice enough, so. Can't manners are easy carried. Can't complain. As long as they have manners, they're all right. Funny story. I'll tell you what, they're probably a bit more bother with me, really. Been a wee bit rougher and they just think some of these boys will be a wee bit. <laughs> I right now. Tell them they look at me and see. But you know what? That's the thing, a bit ignorant that boy there. The thing that I appreciate most about like mom and dad and stuff like that, like say like boyfriends and stuff, like you never get involved. Like say if like I come home and I'm like complaining about boyfriends and stuff like that, you never went, no, that's it. No, you know, you're not getting back with him or blah, blah, blah. You kind of just like put your hands up Stop. and say like, you know, it's none of our business. And I feel like that's such a good thing because there's so many people and families get involved in relationships and sometimes, you know, relationships or they have fights or things happen and I feel like we need to just step back and let your daughter make her own choices what do you think absolutely you're over 18 you can handle your own stuff if you don't you have to learn to handle it that's a good one exactly and I think because people always say that like people are worried about me going like you know they're children going away and they're worried about heartbreak and anxiety and all these things that'll happen in life but at the end of the day like it's their path and mm. without all the things that's happened to me, I wouldn't be where I am. So if you have to always run to your parents or run to somebody mm. all the time to fix your problems, you you can't fix them problems yourself then, yeah. later on. They're not always going to be there. Yeah. If your friend or your parents or whatever you want to call them. You know, you gotta, you got to make up mistakes to you. Fix some mistakes. Yeah. And speaking of, what do you think is your proudest moment of me? Oh... Uh, Every moment. No, that's a cop out. Is that a sneaky way out? That's a cop out. <laughs> uh, I don't really know. Sure, you we were proud of you all the time. Like, you know what I mean? You, you have just went from leaps and bounds all the time. So it's very hard to find one. Like one, sorry. Okay. Um. Do you enjoy watching my content? Oh, sure. Never half it. I watch you all the time. <laughs> Dad you know, is I know, also. I know it's all girly stuff. A lot of it, like you know, but you know, I skip through them. So I flick through all that. Dad has also done the Brave Way yeah, meditation well, course. I haven't finished it completely. I've yeah. got two or three more to do yet. Yeah, and what are you I'm think? too busy to be sitting meditating sometimes. Oh, don't be acting a hard lad here. <laughs> no. Don't be acting a hard no, lad. No, let me finish, let me finish. You know, uh, that was There's only girls listening to this podcast. You don't have to act like a big, strong man. No, 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 no. Show no, your but emotions. I, I, no, since you done made me do the one out there in the, in the contrary one day, I uh, enjoyed that and I've done a few more meditations. Mm-hmm. No, no, they're not wrong with it. That is so cute. Like when but it's just when you're working and you've got things to do, you keep forgetting about doing it. And then, you yeah, know, you know, you should probably find time for them things. Yeah. Because it's very good because it gives you a clear day. Like that day and them days gives me clear days when I do them. Yeah. And the Brave Way Guys is accessible to you. You can get the link down below. Yeah, the meditation. And the show notes. That, that Brave Way is, up, you know, your voice is very top of the range, soothing and all the rest. Like, you know, to listen to you and. And it makes you feel good when you think about gratitude. Mm-hmm. Dad yeah. writes wee comments under them and they're really cute. Uh, I didn't think you read them, you know. I do, yeah, they're cute. I read all of them. I read everyone's comments. I love it. And um, if you want to join the Brave Way, do you want to give them a discount code? What's the discount code? Spuds. <laughs> I can't share my spuds, sorry. <laughs> but you can just tell them Spuds 10. All right, Spuds off. 10, you can call it Spuds 10 for your discount. Spud ten, Spuds 10 if you want to do the meditation course of Brave Way. <laughs> Dad's getting affiliate. Affiliated Affi- to the Brave Way. Yeah, he is, 100%. Um, what's my proudest moment of you? So that's the same I thing think, thing like, we're going to talk about this in a minute because I'm going to get this phone out because people were sending questions and we asked a few different things. But I'd say my proudest is, like, you know, how you've come on with like your emotions, you know, over the years. Right. Yeah. Keep them locked up normally. Yeah. Men are like, so basically men in the, your generation are not very good. And I'll tell you this now because I just asked um, 213,000 people, what would they tell their dad? Right. So I asked that question, what would you tell your dad? What, can, what do you want to tell your dad that you're not going to tell your dad, but you want to tell him? The like a you. No, just like... What would I tell my dad? No, like I asked the public, I asked my followers. Right, right. Like, you know, what's something you can't tell your dad, but yeah. you want to tell him? And most of them were, 
you know, I find it so hard to say love you to my dad, even though we both do, and he never says it either. Right. Now, I'm going to talk about the first time I ever said love you to you. Yeah. Okay. So, I was going away to university, and it was the first time moving away from home, and I was 18, and I think I left, and you were at work, but I rang you, and you goes, and I goes, okay, bye, love you. And you said, behave yourself. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what you that's said. the exact same thing as saying love you no but at the end of the day throughout our childhood like no one really was like that and even whenever I came back from Spain you know the way Spain people give you two kisses on the cheeks very huggy mm. and stuff like that mm. now I remember coming back and like seeing like grannies and like granddads and you hadn't seen them in a year and you'd be like well it's a crack you just sit down and don't mm. hug or nothing like that so I do think Ireland is a wee bit backward when it comes to emotion but I think we brought it out over the years even granny tells me she loves me Wait, uh, well, it, you have Granny's done that in this household, and we definitely, without a doubt, like. Do you think I have brought the emotion out in the uh, house? You have definitely. Wouldn't be on. Wouldn't, we wouldn't show all that, like, and we'd always kept that kind of right and tight, like. Yeah, so I think because people are a lot of people are saying like, I wish I could tell my love and wish we could have more emotions. I think sometimes just do it. I have to be because I became really accustomed because people in England say love you all the time, it, and I lived in England, and everyone was like, "Bye, love you." So I started to say, "Love you all the time." Mm. You know, so sometimes we would have felt that that was kind of uh, what would I say? What could I say about that? A wee bit false sometimes. Well, it's not you know, because you do love me. If it, oh yeah, that's all right. Yeah, but that's a bit like to like my when friends it, when Joe blogs and everybody else saying it to you, like you know, becomes not as important. I know. Then we went to the other extreme where we weren't saying it at all or doing any of that. Like, yeah. So it's probably we were worse off, right, for not doing it, but. You probably should do it, like. Yeah, well, we do do it. And Even I think though either there's a lot of false yeah, love also, out there. Yeah, also, like, but with a bit of whiskey, you get a lot of emotion. Oh, out. definitely. I love everybody. I'm going to have whiskey <laughs> in me. Dad chats so much out when he's on whiskey. Like, it's ridiculous. Like, if I see that whiskey bottle, I crack it open. I'm away. I'm out of there. <laughs> like, see you later. So is everybody else. And it's the same. It's just me and the Alexa then after that. It's me. It's like, Dad just says the same story over and over again. Or he asks you, like, the same question over and over again. Oh, well. Like, that Kirk Spire, like, I don't know what they get in there. You see, the thing about it is, the guys that I'm chatting to are doing the exact same as me, so it works out all right, like, you know? Yeah. But you're talking about the first hour, you're still talking about the eighth hour. <laughs> but you don't realise you're doing it. Okay. Okay. But um, they're all the same, they don't care, sure. Yeah. But I think down the line, I think That's you've become... That's why men should be allowed to go to the pub every day, really. No. <laughs> no. Don't fucking start that. <laughs> We're not right. talking about the pub today. Right. We'll not go there. <laughs> we'll not go there. Um, so people are like, did we always have such a close bond? I definitely think we've gotten closer Was it now that I'm older. Yeah, I, think I was always close. daddy's girl, Lola. Like. Nah, you were always the close, closest. Do you think it's a myth that... Um, you were my favourite daughter. He always says that. I'm his favourite daughter. Because I'm his only daughter, guys. Yeah. There's no other sister. Stephen's anyway. my favourite son. That's it. That's all we get. Yeah. But do you favour daughter over son? That's a bad question to ask <laughs> a parent. I think mum favours Stephen and you favour me. But we'll not. We'll I say we'll keep it neutral. <laughs> no, well, at the end of the day, I think, you know, sometimes uh, it has to be a wee bit of give for more for the wee girls, you see, to be looking after these wee girls. Mm-hmm. The man. To and be honest, the women, I think I can look after myself mo- the most. Then the, then the son wants to be nicer to the mum because it must be the female thing too. Like. Yeah. So there is some beautiful messages from people, like from their dads. And I just think it's very nice to put this up here because it makes you appreciate your dad so much. Um, There's some funny stories in here too. I wanted to bring here. People saying, I wish I could tell my dad he's my role model and I hope I find a husband like him, caring, kind, selfless. That's so cute. Mm-hmm. And then a lot, just a lot of people saying I struggle to tell him I love him. Um, Dad is not my life. Never thought it bothered me. Now I see my husband with my girls. Oh my God, that is so cute. Sometimes you don't realise that those things affect you. I'm so blessed because like you've always been there for me and some people don't have that. Yeah, of course. Uh, there's I know. Of, you know, just not getting that kind of back up as easy. Yeah. People goes, I miss him and I was so lucky to have him as my dad. I wish we could have chats with T again. So she has them memories anyway, so she can hold on to them. I know, but it's so it's nice. Always, it's always going to boil down to that eventually. I know, but it's so nice to tell people like what people would want to say to their dad when their dads are obviously still living. Mm-hmm. 
So, Dad, I appreciate you and like our tea chats. Very good. All right. What a bit of whiskey. <laughs> Behave. <one. laughs> them fucking whiskey chats. I do. I don't mind them when I have a few tequilas in me. Because then we're both as bad as each other. Yes, you're worse. No, I'm not. That's a lie. No, you're inquisitive and ask too many questions then. Yeah, no. I am very inquisitive anyway. So then we asked um, about your Irish dad stories. So our typical Irish dad. I think my dad is a typical Irish dad. So when I put up this, I feel like all Irish dads have very similar qualities. Mm. Like spuds is one of them. Definitely. So obviously when I put up the spuds and dad's eating so many spuds, English people and like Americans obviously were like, what the hell is this? But then Irish people are like, no, that's normal because dad's, it, it just must be like a generational thing. Yes. But you would never see the young generation eating a big plate of spuds like that. Do you know um, what I mean? So No, maybe not. But there is, we were chatting about this, uh, it's like an unwritten rule that like I have nothing to do with my own car, even though I'm a 30 year old woman. Yeah, I know, that's ridiculous. Like. I know, but dad, I think that's like your thing. You know, that's how, so I think Irish dads love language is acts of service. So instead of saying love you, you go and do stuff oh, for of people. Course, I, probably, of course, that's the way it is. You do it, like. You really enjoy doing that. Like, you went up for my IOT the day and you like doing that. Because yeah, I want to make sure you're all right in the care and everything else is right. But the thing is, like, I'm always all right in everything in my life. So I, I just expect you to do that. Because so, I've never had to because you just do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I just bought a house last week and I can do that. But, like, I can't get the MOT sorted. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> you can't even blow up the tyre in the wheel, for God's sake. I know. I don't know why that That tyre has been a half half this last six months, and you still I have to pump it up when she comes down. She only comes no, down every now and again when she comes down. The first thing I do is pump that wheel up for her because it's going to be down by the time she comes back. But the car's on the line, that's why, and it keeps going down. That's what keeps happening. No, no, I really care. The car's all right, sure. You don't need a. So I get care for what you're doing, just buzzing up and down. <laughs> um, so we asked for like your dad's stories. There's a really fun one here, and I was like, this is too mad. So when I was a baby, my dad used to tie a dressing gown belt around my belly um, to my wrist so I wouldn't roll out of the bed. And when I did, he didn't have to get up to go to the cot. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not a bad way. Was keeping that's a here. fucking good tip. Yeah. I don't know. Is that a good tip? Well, maybe uh, social services might have a maybe, word about, um, really? about okay, that. Really? Okay, I don't think that. It, it was just being careful because you could fall. You can fall asleep. Right. Like. right. This is a funny one. My family used to go away in a camper van when we were younger to Europe for a few weeks. The toilet in my camper was essentially a box that connected to the toilet and had to be emptied at campsites. My dad always was the one who sorted it. He was mid empty in the box and I was using the toilet <laughs> and I pissed on his hand and just <laughs> heard him scream at the toilet at me. <laughs> so you get yourself in trouble then if you're a dad when you're doing all that stuff. Yeah. Oh, this is a, this is a bad. One. This is okay. My now partner of ten years first met my dad on Christmas Eve. We had only been seeing each other a month, and I asked him back to mine for the night. My dad got up, fully dressed, shirt and all, tucked in, walked in on us having sex. <laughs> Pulled back the cupboard and told him to get the fuck out. I was drunk and found the whole thing hilarious to the next day. He was absolutely traumatised. I got up and left him and had to see my dad next to dinner. We never mentioned everything, anything ever again. This was done. You don't mention them things again. Do you think? Yeah. You've ever caught me when I'm out of my bed? <sighs> Money fucking time. No, I have to. lying. <laughs> <laughs> we are very uh, open in this house, it. though. Because, like, you know, like, some Irish mums and dads don't know, like, Boyfriend sleep in the same bed. Yeah. Where we were always okay with that. I mean, you didn't really have a choice for me. Like, I'm quite like. No, well, that, that's all right. You know, as long as he's quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Um, okay. W- quick, quick, quick. What advice would you give to a first da- time dad parent? But see, dads aren't as vo- uh, you Dads are more involved now than they were back then. Because look that. at Stephen. I was just chatting about that already. Lads are hands on with kids, family life, all like that. Men in my team would have went to work, worked hard to get, because there wasn't enough money even when you were working. You know, you so mm. you had to do a lot more hours and things like that. And then you were, you just uh, went to the pub then the weekend. <laughs> Dad. <laughs> no, you didn't go to the pub all day. Or maybe no. that's why the this generation no, has hard emotions. Cut that out. I don't for fuck's sake. Mum will kill me. Oh, she won't. She probably will. To be fair. All right, okay. Dad. What are you peeping about? Mom, do you want to say hello? Do you want to say hello? 
Hello, everybody. He's um, <laughs> slagging you off. Who? Dad. I don't <laughs> listen to him. He's telling lies. <laughs> Speaking of lies, what's the biggest lie you've ever told me and what's the biggest lie I've ever told you? I don't tell lies. That's the biggest lie I've told you. Exactly. Then you're. That's your answer. <laughs> <laughs> I've told plenty of lies. Do you remember the time that I went um, to the cinema? Oh, yeah, that's right. That was a bad one. What age were you, 15 or 16? So it was my 15th birthday and we got fake IDs <laughs> <laughs> and we told my mom and dad that we were going to the cinema. Now, we were going to the cinema dressed up to the nines, like high heels and all the jazz. Well, and as if, mom says this day, as if I thought you were going to the cinema, like, and I honestly walked you to go, watched you walk down the lane in the high heels. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, we didn't mean that because we would have got dressed up to go to the cinema no. years ago. But anyway, so we went. That's, we never got nowhere else. We never got to this uh, and things right. like that. But then we went. So we went to the cinema, or we went out, and we went to um, the local nightclub. I got in with my fake ID. None of my friends did, so they went to like another place, and I went in, and I obviously had never really drank before, and I was obviously drinking. I probably didn't even eat Where anything. Where did you get into that night? Kitty Dillies. Well, Kitty Dillies, I. Mm-hmm. Right. It was the known place, but all and behold, who was there but my brother? All right. So, That's right. got touted on. Yes. Do you remember that? He loved telling on you. He too. loved telling on me. He was so bad <laughs> because I was his annoying wee sister. At the end of the day, when you truly think about it, like how much how annoying must I must have been? Like it's annoying wee sister. Like my first boyfriend was his best friend. Yeah. Yeah, that's annoying. It's a bad start. It wasn't a great start, but that was be- that was after. The whole going to the nightclub, being really drunk. So this is obviously the first time I'd ever been drunk. And I got this the first and only time I think I've ever been blackout. So I can't really remember Katie Dilly's. But anyway, I remember my head being hanged out of the taxi on the way home. Mm-hmm. And vomiting and vomiting. And came in the door and obviously I thought mum wouldn't be up. But obviously my brother had told on me. Why did you think you needed to do that in the first place? Do what? Was it like peer pressure? What, go out? Go out with all. Okay, no, because you you that's what you want to do when you're 15. Just a wee peer pressure thing like Aye. you would. No, but that's what we like doing. Whose we idea was it? Mine. Uh, Ringleader. Typical. I mean, we were already probably drinking at that time. The but bad, like, we were, as the, the first time negative. I was really drunk. The bad but because I also, the first time I ever drank, I took your potching. Dad used to have potching. Do you still have the potching? Never mind. That's You shouldn't talk about potching. Why? Is it illegal? It's illegal when we first time. Right, guys. Stricken from the record. But, you know, hypothetically, ago, it, mo- it was something it similar usually. to... To anyway, it was like vodka, but it was in a river rock bottle under the shelf. And <sighs> we thought this was unreal. We were like, We'll get this. And you could have poisoned we, yourself. We took well, why have potching in a river rock bottle under the under the thing? It's your fault. Was it in a river rock bottle? It was in a bottle, and then we took it to the Wasn't play park there? and we got you know those wee Kinder Buenos and we put them in half and we did shots. We took it raw. You wouldn't have took potch, wasn't potching. We took potching raw. 100%. There's no way. You wouldn't drink it like that. No way. Listen, Dad, I, you can drink potch and rub. We were vomiting all. Like. <laughs> you would have took a but sip But I never got drunk. spat it out again. But anyway, That's so... That's probably the stuff I used to rub the dogs with. Dad, don't say that. <laughs> That's another lie I used to say. I used to say, where are you going? You go mad about a dog. And I used to really think that you were going to get a dog. <laughs> like, not okay. That's another re- thing for saying none of your business where I'm going. Yeah. But anyway, so got drunk, came home. M- my friends, like, obviously I was the drunkest because I got into the nightclub and my friends were carrying me up the stairs and mum came out and she was like, oh my God, my baby. And she was like so, like, she was like mm-hmm. crying and all. She was like emotional and obviously I was just like a load of drunk and I could not remember what was going on. But I kind of remember that. But got into the bed, woke up the next morning, mum comes storming into the room, me and my two friends. And she was like, get up now, we're all going to mass. So she put us in the car at seven o'clock mass, not even nine o'clock mass. Was it seven or nine? Or maybe nine? Nine o'clock nine, mass? Nine. So we went to nine o'clock mass and we sat. she put us in the front row. I've never sat in the front row in my life. And she put the three of us in the front row, humming a drink. Like fear hanging on me. I'd say you probably only had about four drinks. And then and then obviously took my friends home and the, my friends were freaking out that mum was going to tell them, but she didn't tell. She was cool. No, she wouldn't do that. But then after that, we were kind of like, we would allow them. Well, they were I was grounded were, until Christmas. You, you were, they were all right. You were the only mess. Right. And the show. Aye, uh, that is true. But that was the first and last time I had blackout drunk. I've never been blackout since that. You sure? 100%. Not 100%, but 
I'm pretty got, sure. I, th- I think you've got over the drink thing anyway. You're not. I'm not as bad. I'm you're not. not. You're not mad about it, which is which is a good thing. So you should probably. The Irish people are silly. Like they they don't drink and worry about drinking. Chat about drink before they're eighteen, mm. fourteen, fifteen to eighteen. Panicking about chat about this drink, and then when it comes to the point, they go stone mad. In places like France and Italy and all <laughs> that, they're all drinking from. Like life. No, well. You know, f- their culture is to drink. Oh, right, okay. Their culture is Our to culture th- here? No, no, the culture in, say, France and right. places like that is to drink, get the kids drinking wine at the table and Aye. get them used to alcohol. Just a sip of wine. They're not, drink- they're not throwing wine yeah. in them. Like. And then there's no real maddened thing about it. That's why you never hear tell of the French and the Italy and the, them the youth's been too bad. Like, it's always about English culture drinking and Irish culture drinking, which is... We love a bev, I like. Because we, we're starved of it and talked about drink until we're 18. And then That's we go a lie. Back. Because we drank more 15, like. It's been no, real. but it's, you know, it's the chance oh, to because get you at it. It's a chance to get at it because everybody's talking about it. When we get to 18, we get in, then you're 15, you're f- and somebody says, I can get my hands on drink. Of course you're going to take it. I know. Do you remember you take your pledge? Yeah. Like in the Catholic Church, we have to take a pledge. So you're not allowed to, you take a pledge when you're like 12 or like something like that. And t- you're not allowed to drink until you're 18. And I remember, like, you know, thinking you were cool by, like, crossing your fingers and putting your hands behind your back. Because <laughs> you were obviously not going to not drink till you were 18. Like, but, um, yeah, I was killed cool back then. People are like, do you worry about me? But you never do. Nope. Why not? Because you're the one that says, sure, you could get hit by a bus if you stepped outside the house here. So why are you not? Always say that. I always, because people always say to me about traveling, they're like, oh, is it unsafe? And I'm like, yeah, but, like, you could go around your corner and get stabbed by someone. Like, if you're... You know what I mean? You could something bad could happen to you when you're keep playing it safe. So you may as well do the things you actually fucking love. Yeah, you know, no point in worrying about it. You're going to go out and do your life anyway. Exactly. You know, life's too short to worry. If you can not worry, it's easier, isn't it? Yeah. L- last questions that I always ask people on the Sinead Says podcast: Something you like about yourself? Don't know. See, that's bad. No self love. We need to learn. I you could have to say think about it. Would feel uh, it would f- sound fucking big headed. But big headed. No, but that's not true. We need to love ourselves in this podcast. It's all about loving our own personalities. Uh, what I love about myself would be, um, I've just gone blank there. I know, about. it's hard, isn't it? Uh-huh. But this is, what, this is what we do here, we challenge it. Right, let me think. I need a second. Mm. You can do your f- other question first, if you want. Which was the other question? The other question is, what is something you like about me? Just your... Vibrance in your your glow, right? Um, full of energy, like in a <laughs> minute. What what else? You've got it all. Like you've got that natural thing about you. That it's all natural. There's no there's no hidden agenda. We right. So that's that's about ten things you could go on and on. Like you know what I mean? Because I'm your dad. I'm going to say everything nice about you. Like uh-huh. so, that's it about you. Like well, what about you? Me, you go back to me again. Um, uh, I can't get on there, now. Dad, you have to. <laughs> you can't get off the podcast. The final question. Right. I could say plenty. I have to say what I like about you after this. So. All right. Let me think. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is terrible. Come on. I'm not giving you any hints either. So. Um, just be a good dad, like. Just like a nice, I like being a good dad. Just, I don't know. What's <laughs> nice about me? I can't. That's not even the question. Is it? That's not even the answer for for that question. Um, what do I like about me? This is fucking terrible. Do you want me to answer for you? Um, uh, what do I like about me, Maureen? Dad, <laughs> can dad can't answer the last question. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Come on, you, daddy, mom's starving. You hear that? If you don't answer, she's gonna starve. Right. Let me think. Uh, I can't get on. I'll say it. I like how no matter what can always count on you. Like if I was in anywhere, you would pick me up. Yeah. And that's that. And there'd be nothing said about it. I also like how you raised me to, you know, not be spoiled or anything. Like you never, um, like, you know, gave me any money. But also I knew that if I wanted it, you would have given me it. Out of necessity. So you did. A very good um discipline. I also like how you um 
you're a uh, caregiver. You look after everyone, and you are the home, the house, or the, well, you're not the you're not the. You don't rule the roost, absolutely. But you not. are the provider, basically. So we know we can always count on you. You're also really fun. Good. Yes, you don't take life too seriously. Yeah. There you go. You see, you starting to get it now. Yeah. Starting well, to get it now. I You're also very lovable and very affectionate. So. I'm very quite blessed, but I feel like I brought that out in you, so I'm going to give myself that credit. I'll give you 10 out of 10 for that. Okay, that out. right, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. No, that's, that's beautiful. All right, Dad. So thank you so much for, thank you so much well, for being on the Sinead Says Podcast. I, I don't know what anybody would want to listen to all that for, but good luck to them. Good luck to them. And that's I that. I good to them and useful to them.